Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on relating linear context to graphs features. We'll need to coordinate which of the scenarios matches up with the graphs based on what we know about linear equations. So it says here, Mr. Mole left his burrow that lies below the ground and started digging his way at a constant rate deeper into the ground. Let Y represent Mr. Mole's altitude in meters relative to the ground after X minutes. Which of the following could be the graph of the relationship? So couple key things it says here. It says it goes at a constant rate. All of these are straight lines, so that doesn't really narrow it down. It does say that he's starting digging his way deeper into the ground and that it starts below the ground. Okay, so those are two things. Let's see if I can highlight that for you right here. So it says he that lies below the ground and started digging his way at a constant rate deeper. Okay, so that's probably the key word. You can't see it anymore. Uh, and that would be option D. So we start below ground and we start digging deeper into the ground. This is below ground because here is zero. That'd be the, the altitude in meters, zero meters above or below ground. And this would be below ground. That'd be like negative two meters as an example, below ground. And then going at a constant rate further into the ground. So that's why that's below ground. And that's why this graph looks like this. And I'm guessing that X is like the time. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't specify, but it's just showing that it's going at a constant rate for time. Let's check it. And we got it. Moving on to the next question. So, Appleine is mowing lawns for a summer job. For every mowing job, she charges an initial fee plus a constant fee for each hour of work. Her fee for a five-hour job, for instance, is $42. Her fee for a three-hour job is $28. Let Y represent Appleine's fee in dollars for a single job that took X hours for her to complete. So just if we were to make a graph here, this would be like dollars and this would be hours, okay? Which of the following information about the graph of the relationship is given? So it's saying which of these pieces of information about the graph do we know? So we know that couple things so it's not talking is it the slope in x intercept is it the slope in y intercept is it the slope in a point that is not an intercept is it the x intercept and y intercept y intercept in a point that is not an intercept and two points that are not intercepts let's analyze this so there's a lot of information there i'm sure it's kind of overwhelming to look at i mean it's not even four multiple choices it's like it's like eight choices so we have one two three hour job i'm just going to plot these two points and it's 28 dollars. so this is 28 and that is three and that's a point that we know and the other point we know is five after five hours it was 42. so as you can see as we mow more lawns or do more hours or this person uh you're going to gain more and more money and that's the natural relationship of work however what does this mean in terms of intercepts and slope it doesn't tell you what her constant fee is that would be the slope it doesn't tell you what the initial fee is because that would be your y-intercept and it doesn't tell you where she's has zero hours of work that would be the x-intercept so just letting you know we don't know any of the intercepts and we don't know the slope so which option does that mean that means it's going to be f we're given two points that are not intercepts. And again, our graph here, we saw that we had a point here and a point here. Those are two points that are not intercepts. And there we go. That should be it. Moving on. A charity organization had a fundraiser where each ticket was sold for a fixed price. After selling 200 tickets, they had a net profit of $12,000. They had to sell a few tickets just to cover necessary production costs of $1,200. Let Y represent the net profit where they have sold X tickets. Which of the following could be the graph of this relationship? Key piece of information here, they said they had to sell tickets to cover production costs. So that means when they made $1,200, that's $1,200, they sold this much in tickets, they had $0 profit. Profit equals like the money you bring in minus the cost. So essentially they were negative. They spent money up front, and they had to cover those costs with the tickets. So we need to look for something that describes that relationship. And the only one that goes negative is B and D in terms of production costs. Now, when you're selling tickets, you're not going negative. 
Okay, that's that's not the whole point. The whole point of selling tickets is going up. That you're making money. So D and C are out. Okay, so now we're down to A and B, and we see that B is the better answer because we start where there's no profit, and we sell right here a certain number of tickets we don't know to get twelve hundred. Well, sorry, twelve hundred dollars worth of tickets to get out of the negative twelve hundred dollars, and now we're at zero dollars profit. Okay, so that that was what's described in that graph. We'll check it out. Move on. Last question. Oh, we're not on to the last question. We have a lot more questions to go. All right, we're going to try to pick up the pace here. <laughs> a lake near the Arctic Circle is covered by a two-meter thick sheet of ice during the cold winter months. When spring arrives, the warm air gradually melts the ice, causing its thickness to decrease at a constant rate. After three weeks, the sheet ice is only 1.25 meters thick. Let Y represent the ice sheet's thickness after X weeks. So this is going to be like the other one, like two problems ago. Which of the following information about the graph is given? Okay. So it's covered by two meter thick sheet of ice during cold winter months. When spring arrives, the warm air gradually melts the ice, causing it to thickness at a constant rate. After three weeks, it's right. Okay, so uh, this is our starting point. Anytime you have a starting point or starting value, this is going to be your y intercept. So we have our y intercept, and then it tells us three weeks later, that's our x, x weeks. So that's our x, and it is 1.25 meters thick, and that's the y. So we're given another point. We're given the y-intercept plus another point that's not an intercept. So let's go ahead and see what that is. It doesn't tell us how fast the ice melts, but it does tell us the starting point. So a y-intercept and a point that is not intercept, that's option E. And we're good. All right, here we go. We got three more. Caden is a stunt driver one time during a gig where she escaped from a building about to explode. She drove at a constant speed to get to the safe zone that was 160 meters away. After three seconds of driving, she was 85 meters away from the safety zone. Let Y represent the distance in meters from the safe zone, and X is the seconds. Which of the following could be the graph of the relationship? Okay, so Y is the distance in meters from the safe zone. So we're getting closer to the safe zone. That means, let's see here. Drove at a constant speed of, that was 160 meters away. After three seconds of driving, she was 85 meters away from the safe zone. Okay, okay, so we're trying to decide which one is a graph representing this. If the safe zone uh, started off as 160 meters away and then we're getting closer, we're looking for a y-intercept that's positive. So the only graph that really makes sense with this is C. We start off 160 meters, then after three seconds we get there, and after a certain number of seconds driving, you're finally going to arrive. I guess it could be B if you considered a negative distance, but normally that's not the case. And then A, you would never get there. That's saying you're driving away from the safe zone. I just want that's why I was pausing because I was double checking to see if he was driving away from the safe zone or towards. It says trying to get to the safe zone, so that's going to be option C, final answer. All right, there we go. A charity organization had to sell 18 tickets to their fundraiser to cover necessary production costs. They sold each ticket for $45. Okay, this is actually good information. This tells us our slope. So they actually gave us our slope this time. This is slope. And they said they had to sell 18 tickets to fundraise just to cover the necessary costs. So this is our x-intercept. Okay, so if y is the cost. Let's see, y in rep net profit. Okay, and then they have sold X tickets. So if they said they had to sell 18 tickets to get to to cover their production cost, that means they got to zero dollars profit. And that means like we started out negative, we got here, we kind of had this scenario earlier, and that is gonna be an X intercept, and then this is the slope. So we're given the X intercept and the slope. Let's see which one that is. Slope and a point that is not an intercept. Two points that are, let's see. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong here. Had to sell 18 tickets to their fundraiser just to cover necessary production costs. They sold each ticket for $45. Hmm, that is definitely the slope. Oh, it says right here, the first one. <laughs> slope and x-intercept. Sometimes you look too hard. There we go. Last question. A young sumo wrestler decided to go on a special high-protein diet. When he started his diet, he weighed 79.5 kilos. He gained weight at a rate. Ah, there we go. Anytime it says rate, that's a dead giveaway. That means this is the slope. Okay, so we got the slope immediately. 
he, when he started his diet, he gained, okay, so this is, again, this is your start, and that is your y-intercept. So this time we're given y-intercept and slope. Oh, we don't need to know that. So <laughs> let's represent the sumo wrestler's weight after X months. So this is a gain diet. It's going to be A, okay? So if he's gaining weight, he started at a weight, you ha can't have negative weight, so D's wrong and B's wrong, and he's not losing weight, and he can't weigh zero, so definitely A is your correct answer. And there we go. So I hope this, uh, I hope this was a helpful video. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.